just falls right through both sides. So keep your thumb on there and get it centered up. And go ahead and drop your grip on. All right, good morning. So we're gonna do a quick unboxing for the Recover Tactical PIX. Now, there's a lot of, um, you know, unboxings and reviews. I have another video, if you'll check that out, uh, where I go into a little bit more depth on the internals and some things I like and don't like about it, but I thought I'd go back to the beginning and do like an actual unboxing to kind of show how I put this thing together. So, here's what comes in it. Got your toolkit, you've got, um, part that goes on top is your charging handle, it goes on top of your block. A grip, a nice little grip. I got lucky and got the um, the flip-up sights for free. And then there's a little instruction manual that talks about how to put your grip on. Uh, kind of looks like Ikea instructions. Um, and then of course you have the chassis itself, which we'll dive right into. <clears throat> so, the chassis, is solid. It's actually very, very solid. Reinforced polymer. Um, it has literally no flex to it. Even on um, this section here where it's wide open and it looks, you know, looks maybe thin, there's like very little flex to it. So down the magwell, I mean, it's, it is solid. It's very solid. Uh, I was very pleased at that when I first got it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about <clears throat> what comes with it. So as I mentioned, I got some flip-up sights. I think those are like $39, and um, they had like a free coupon, and I took that over the 10% off. So I will say they're, um, you know, they're they're pretty decent little sights. They actually have a metal post with um, elevation and windage options. Um, got your uh, close and long range openings, and you can adjust your stuff there with a nice solid click. The flips up are nice and solid, and these are also hard polymer, so pretty nice. Um, the grip that comes with it is a pretty nice little grip. It's solid. It's got a good texture in here, and uh, goes right in and looks looks good on here. So we're going to talk about the installation of that in a minute, and then tons of accessories. So this is the lower piece to here. And that's for permanently attaching it to your Glock. But uh, if you check the reviews around and, and talk to Recover, they'll tell you you don't need that when it's inside the chassis. Uh, I would say that is definitely true. Um, got a, uh, it's like a stainless bolt. And that goes with your grip, which is a little confusing at first, but we'll go through that. You got the bolt that holds the front together if you want to do a permanent insulation, which just you know slightly closes up that little gap. Um, you don't need it, uh, and in, quite honestly, if you're going to do a permanent insulation, that's up to you. But most people are going to want to take a minute out. And you got these little tiny screws, and those are just to hold this all together. That's out of the way. So we're just going to keep this piece and the grip. Now I'm going to swap it out for this grip because I'm building something that's gonna be a little bit crazier. Um, just, this is where it gets confusing. This grip has <laughs> a normal uh, grip bolt in it, which is great, because I can always use a spare. Um, and it has a little tool holder thing in the bottom and all that, but you're not gonna use that bolt, you're gonna use this bolt. So let's do that real quick. This is a Phillips head. So as this goes together, this little slot right here is where your nut's gonna go. And let's see if I can get it in there without it. It just falls right through both sides, so keep your thumb on there and get it centered up. And go ahead and drop your grip on. And get that right in there. Once it grabs, it's good. It's gonna torque it down. Just fine, with no problem at all. And there you go. Now I kind of like this grip that I got from Adaptive Tactical. One, because it's a little bit wild and that's kind of the look that I'm going for with this build. But it has a really kind of a cool 
grip angle and you'll see like comparatively it's pretty big too so i don't know a little bit different i kind of liked it um but that's that's me that's for what i'm doing for this build go ahead and open it up and you've seen this piece many times where we people install it and all that i just want to go over a little bit so the trigger mechanism is here pretty simple setup this is the area that I think that uh, I'd love to see them kind of tighten this trigger mechanism up. You know, you've got a little spring back here, which just simply returns it forward. Two screws here, um, and it allows this just to travel back and forth, and this finger, if you will, pulls the trigger. So, pretty simple mechanism. Um, you're pulling a trigger remotely and that's where it starts to get a little bit more complicated. So we'll go ahead and slide this on. Just a note, it needs to go all the way forward on your slide here, like this, like that. And um, we'll do a, a safety check just to be sure we're good here. The barrel, no mag, we're good. So we're gonna drop this in, pretty straightforward. So this is how it goes in, you'll see your trigger hits right there and that's where it breaks the trigger safety and then it goes all the way back so when you charge it your trigger shoe goes forward which puts this right on the safety so it is ready to go you've already broken the trigger safety with that because the way it sits forward so when you pull the trigger you'll see and i'll hold this section together You'll see it go all the way back here, all the way to the where it locks the trigger up right there. Now it's ready to break. Now this is a Glock 22 trigger, which is already, you know, kind <laughs> of heavy. So you're gonna get a heavy trigger pull right here, and you'll see it go to ready to break, break. So it's a little bit heavy trigger pull. If you had uh, a third party trigger in here with a lighter trigger pull, you'd probably improve the overall recover trigger. But you have this entire mechanism going through the body to pull that trigger, so it's a little heavy, but it's not bad. So we're gonna close this piece up. We're gonna snap top and bottom rails and the front magwell. And we are from right here, we're ready to go. So we're gonna drop a magazine in, uh, no rounds. Um, I'm using this mag because I have the extension on it, which is from Strike, and um, it allowed, it just really kind of goes with the whole look. Um, that's pretty much it, y'all. So, charge it, mag drops free, bam. Pull the trigger, reset, pull the trigger. So, if you keep your finger tight on it while you're shooting, you're gonna get even a better performance. So one last thing I'll talk about is just um, some stuff I've seen on a couple of reviews. Um, and that is this section right up here. So because your barrel sits back in here, and now if you have a smaller one, um, it's going to sit even further back. The inside of this chamber is going to get black. There is just no two ways about it. So just be prepared for that. You just need to clean it periodically. It's also gonna make the front of your Glock black because all that blast is gonna stay around there. So um, your receiver and your slide are gonna just get covered in, um, in black. So just be aware of that. Now, what I'm gonna be doing actually is I'm waiting on a threaded barrel to come in and I'm doing a nine millimeter conversion. Uh, so I have less expensive rounds to shoot. Uh, and then I'm gonna do a Midwest Industries blast forwarder, which is gonna stick out about three and a quarter inches. And that'll take that blast all the way out here it's gonna to add to the look of the whole uh, thing that I'm trying to go for before I custom paint it. And that's gonna do a few things. One, it's gonna give it a look, it's gonna push the blast forward. If I wanna put a light on here, it's not gonna get damaged or you know black all around it. And then I'm not gonna to have to worry about cleaning the inside of this thing all the time. And it's gonna keep the front of my gun cleaner at the same time. So uh, if a threaded barrel, and a blast forwarder or a comp or a suppressor or any of that kind of stuff is an option for you. That's going to do a lot for you to keep the front of your weapon clean. Um, but it's not necessary. You just run it like that, run this thing into the dirt, whichever, whatever you decide to do. For me, I'm ready to go. The only other piece is 
is I, uh, I want to put a brace on it. And so I picked up this inexpensive folder, which I haven't decided if I like. It was like 40 bucks. And I was thinking for this nine millimeter contraption, I would run a fairly inexpensive setup. Um, just screw that right in. I'll need to torque that down when the time comes. But this way I can run my, um, my brace on here, an SB3 brace. Um, I actually picked up more of a blade style brace to kind of go with the look. Um, but that allows me to fold this thing over. You see your charging handle is massive, so when it's folded, you'll have no way of charging it. So I haven't really decided how I, how I want to go about this just yet. Um, but that's kind of where I am so far. I hope you like it. This is um, trying to make it as, as clean and clear for anyone looking to buy one as, as I can. Um, I don't get paid by recovering any way, shape, or form. I bought all this myself, um, but I like it, and it's you know it's designed to be a, a fun uh, utility piece. And I think that a little tweaking, I'm going to make this my own, and I'll customize it, and we'll have something cool to play around with. So I hope you like it. Um, check it out. Like, subscribe. Hit me up if you have any questions. Happy to answer them. And um, go out and have a good time. Be safe. Support the second. Let's rock.